Welcome back there students. It's time for a little bit more flip class and in today's flip class we'll be discussing the nature of science aka what science is and how science works. So let's start off with the nature of science and ogling this beautiful uh, scientific art. First, very important that you understand that science is not a quest for the truth. That's not, uh, that's not what science is for. Instead, science is a search for a more precise way to predict how the world works. It might be true, it might not be true. What's important for science is that it works. So we're trying to predict how the world works and if it works, then we feel pretty good about our science behind that. It's a process for answering questions. Here are some of the questions that we can answer using science. For example, uh, what is there? That's a good question that maybe science can answer. How does it work? That's a good question that science can answer. How did it come to be that way? What was the process that formed whatever this is that we're observing? That's another good question that science can answer. Science works the way it does because it has principles. In those principles, we have to remember that science can explain only the natural world. So, none of that. In order to explain things, we have to be able to test those explanations. So explanations need to be tested using evidence from that natural world. So, with science, we learn about the natural world by gathering evidence, and that's crucial in how science is different from philosophy or religion or any other process of trying to understand and explain the universe. Science, we can only gather evidence. Science is a process, a little bit more on that. It has a whole process because its claims are based on reasoning, testing, and replication. If it can't have all three of those, reasoning, testing, and replication, then it's not very good science. And more importantly, scientific claims must be falsifiable. If we can't show something to be not this, then we cannot do anything even closely related to science with it. Maybe closely related to, but not actual science. Uh, it reminds me of that show Mythbusters, which also wasn't exactly uh, actual science, but their whole job was to go out and bust some myths to find and falsify what they could falsify. So scientific claims must be falsifiable. Contrary to what you may have been taught previously, scientists do not follow this scientific method because science involves continuous observations, questions, multiple hypotheses, and then more observations. Everyone seems to always forget that when you're doing an experiment, you are observing the results. You observe the results. Your data are based on your observations from your testing. And a lot of this drives in sort of a circle. Basically, uh, the biggest problem I have with the scientific method is that final step of conclusion. Science never concludes and science never proves never proves anything. That's not what we do. In fact, I want you to get the P word out of your vocabulary. Remember, in science, conclusions are reliable because of the, the repetition and the replication and the testing and the reasoning. So they are reliable, but they're tentative. More testing could change our ways of thinking. So we don't you deal in absolutes like proving or true. Basically, we're looking to falsify things, and as soon as we can falsify an idea, then, uh, well, we start all over again because the scientific method is not like a common boxed strategy. Basically, the scientific method that you've been taught where the scientist starts by asking a question, then formulating a hypothesis, performing an experiment, collecting data, and then drawing conclusions, and then calling it a day, that is not how science works. That is a, uh, the pr stupid, a per stupid, yes. I was gonna say preposterous and then it turned into stupid and I say per stupid oversimplification. This right here, this is more how science works. You'll notice we got arrows going all over the place, going all over the place. Here is some of your observations. Here's some of the things that go into your observations. This would be our gathering and interpreting data. And notice we've got arrows going back and forth here, right? Benefits and outcomes, community analysis and feedback. Science uh, is, is really, uh, it's, it's kind of a mess. So remember, this is too simple. This is a more accurate representation of how the scientific method actually works and how it is, because uh, remember, it's heckin' complicated, the scientific method. It's complicated. In science, we use experiments to test 
our hypotheses, to test our ideas. So what an experiment is, the testing is a purposeful plan to test that hypothesis. Researchers must ensure that they're testing what they plan to test, which is one of the reasons why this looks such a mess, but also one of the reasons that you always talk about controls so much, controlled testing or controlling the variables. That's crucial because we need to make sure that we're only testing what we set out to test. And in doing so, we are testing this relationship between the dependent and the independent variable. Think of this like cause and effect. Let me explain further. Effectively, we want to know, does changing the independent variable cause the dependent variable to change? If it does, then we've got something. If it doesn't, then we've still got something. That's the greatest thing about science. We don't need our hypothesis to be supported by the data. Either way, we've still got something. So effectively, how I like to think of science and uh, any scientific study, we're looking for what's the effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. How's the independent variable changing the dependent variable? So a hypothesis is also how the independent variable affects the dependent variable. Very important uh, distinction to make because this is probably our best definition of what a hypothesis is right here how the independent variable affects the dependent variable. Remember, in science, it's all about the evidence, just like uh, the expression seeing is believing. That is, that's where we're at with science, except we don't, we don't really do believing. We just, seeing is having evidence to support your claim. Ooh, like clever? Yes, like clever. Scientific ideas are rejected or not able to be rejected on the basis of evidence. Remember, every claim we're looking to make in science needs to be something that is falsifiable. In our test, we're trying to either reject it because it's false or find that we cannot reject it because we cannot say it is false. Notice I did not use the T word and I did not use the P word. I'll say it again uh, for the people in the back. Scientific ideas, we're looking to say it's false or not be able to say it's false. That's it. Therefore, science is not proving anything. That's, that's for like a court of law. That's where they say, oh, like, can you prove this beyond a whatever certainty? Uh, my favorite is when lawyers ask, can you prove it scientifically? Can you prove it beyond a scientific doubt? And no, because that's not what science is for. Instead, we're just looking to make explanations based on our evidence. Science is specific. Many of you have been incorrectly taught what the heart of all scientific testing is, mainly that a hypothesis is not that thing. I can't even bring myself to say it. It's not. Again, that is a per stupid oversimplification. Per stupid. How stupid is it? Per stupid. How stupid? Per stupid. That's pretty stupid. That's not what a hypothesis is. And if you say too much, maybe you'll get some of that. No, not really, but I will be upset about it. Let's say what a scientific hypothesis is then, because science is specific. A hypothesis is our explanation of our observations that can be tested with experiments. Do you see how you can't really talk about a hypothesis without talking about an experiment? And you can't really talk about an experiment without mentioning that you're testing your hypothesis. So I say again, hypothesis is an explanation of observations that can be tested with experiments. If you're looking for a nice two-worder like that nonsense, you could go with this a testable explanation. Just two words, much more accurately describing what a hypothesis is. So focus here, not there. This answer is good, and this answer makes me wanna throw a conniption. Basically, our hypothesis is how does our independent variable affect the dependent variable? How does IV aero DV? That's an excellent way to think about a hypothesis. Or you go with the easy, testable explanation. Either way, these two are good, and that one, children, is bad. Don't say it anymore. We want to throw a conniption. Let's talk about what a theory is while we're being so specific, because if the hypothesis is more complicated than you thought, you better believe so is a theory. What a theory is is a hypothesis that's been well-tested and has large amounts of supporting evidence. On top of that, theories have no 
falsifying evidence, no refuting evidence. All our evidence supports our idea, and there's no evidence that we've ever found not supporting it or saying it's false. That being said, as soon as we find some of that false information, again, because it's tentative, we can change our theory. It takes a large amount of time to become what we would consider an idea to be well tested. Much, much moose in long amounts of time. Keep in mind that a theory could also be many different hypotheses grouped together. When we talk about cell theory, there's six tenets because there's actually six different hypotheses all amalgamated into one theory that has been well tested. The other thing that you need to understand about a theory is that scientists have full confidence in all theories. Anytime you hear someone like on the news or in some sort of debate say, well, the scientists, uh, they're not sure. Uh, some of them disagree with this or that theory. No, they don't. No, they don't. Scientists have full confidence in all theories because the large amount of supporting evidence and the preposterous amount of testing. This is difficult because uh, popularly, People use the word theory when they're not sure. Like, oh, do you have any theories as to why this happened? Well, that's an interesting theory, but I'd like to see a product. I mean, where is the evidence? Well, if it's really a theory, the evidence is all over the place because it's, it's a well-substantiated, that means it's got a crap ton of evidence supporting it. So it's a well-substantiated explanation about some kind of aspect of the natural world. This second definition is the one that you should be using in science class, and this first one is the devil, and I wish it didn't exist. Just strike it from your vocabulary. A theory is a strong explanation that we're really, 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 really sure of. Now, you've got a worksheet to help drive some of this home. It looks like this. The link to it is right up in Mia. The link to it is on the BLE you have access to this worksheet starting right now. When you go to work on the worksheet, just like before, you'll be able to double click on all the pictures to add words to the text box. You'll be able to type directly in the blanks. To help you in filling out this paper, because there's a lot of arrows and a lot of confusion, there's a video right here. Links for both the worksheet and the video are in the description. And if you're watching this during the sweet years of Rona, which you probably are, this video should start playing as soon as this video you're currently watching is done. So make sure you take the time to have this worksheet up and ready because like le legit, I'm gonna give you the answers to this worksheet in the video, okay? Thanks for watching everybody. hour to get a 10 minute video. This is ridiculous mess. Where is my remote? Why can I never find anything? Get these. I don't need any of these things right here right now. That was a mess.